everywhere I go. The people really want to know who I is and who I be. They stop. Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome back to Ask NK. Today, we have some exciting news coming from the folks at Epic Games as they've just announced the final release of Twin Motion 2022.1. Now we've seen the pre-release and of course we've seen a couple of cool features that comes with it which includes the sky dome the path tracer the support for 3d connection mouse access to quick sell library set of assets and of course for those who like to share their projects with their clients you can now take advantage of the early cloud access and do all of this so with that said there's just a whole lot of things that is now available with twin motion 2022.1 and it is just extremely impressive so for those who like to take a look at this i'm going to put a link in the description and with that said let's dive directly into twin motion with twin motion 2022 opened right here and with a scene that we've gotten from a friend it looks extremely nice so the very first thing which i would like to talk about is the support for 3d connection mouse so with a large scene like this you can now take advantage of the 3d connection mouse to travel through it so i can't imagine how hard you know traveling across scenes like this can be but with something like this you can easily travel across scenes and you can travel through for those who like to go up and down you know you like to just travel across it just makes navigating across your scene extremely easy now with that said we also have the brand new path tracer so with a path tracer you can simply get way better quality renders and in this case i can just travel across somewhere like this and uh, the materials look even way better at this point so we can get that beautiful reflection if that is what you're going for and of course if you like to change the looks and the feel of your entire scene right now you can even do that so if you go over to where you have your library there is now a beautiful set of sky domes that you can use and these are hdri sky domes which can influence the lighting and also the skyline aesthetics of your entire scene so with this i can go over to the morning and afternoon go over to cloud section and within the cloud i can select any of this cloud that i want so for example if i would like to get a moth cloud 10 i can just simply double click and that will be loaded right into a scene and i can go ahead and tap r on the keyboard and get that there now if you like to play with the rotation of course you can so you can play with the rotation of how you want the clouds to be and you can also play with the intensity you can use this to change the overall feel and also the mood of your project so one of the amazing things that you can now import into twin motion despite the fact that you have access to importing several types of 3d files are point clouds so in this case if you like to import point clouds you can and right here what we have is a very beautiful scene that we just captured from the university and we're going to load that right into twin motion so let's export that as a point cloud and bring that right in so with our usb plugged in we can go over to import and go over to point cloud click on the open and we're just going to go ahead and find that so right here within the usb you can see we have that there click on open and we can hit the import button so because of how the scene has been set up this is definitely going to look like that so what we need to do is we can rotate that and with that done we can also scale this all the way down now there is a couple of things to keep in mind with the point cloud so let's uh, frame in on that and uh, get all the way to it so one of the things to keep in mind is when you import point clouds you would probably not get a full geometry like it's not completely a full geometry that you'll be getting so i'm just going to frame into that and let's just go around and look at it so if I bring this right there and uh, take a closer look, you can see that we can look at the model. It looks good. You can actually see the representation of what the final model is supposed to look like. But the closer you get to this model, the more points you would start noticing. So you can play with the point size if you want. If you want these to cast shadows like we have that there, you can. You can turn this off, turn this on if you want, and you can play with all these other features. And this is going to be very useful for those who like to capture data and would like to bring this into the architectural design or into the scene and get a very good representation of what they captured. Now, while we speak about representation and things you like to capture, certain things do not capture during render time. So if I go in and uh, look at this, so let's just go all the way up and look at that. You can see we have a couple of decals here. So I've actually gone through and take out all the materials that comes with this just to add this decal so that you guys can see what it looks like. And if we proceed to turn on the path tracer, you would notice that decals are not supported. So in case you're thinking about things that you can work with, decals are not supported at this point. Amazing stuff are here, but you would not be able to work with decals. Things like your spotlights, they do work. So in case I would like to throw in a spotlight, let's actually go ahead and uh, position the spotlight somewhere like so. So I'm just going to position the spotlight somewhere like this. Okay, so with that there, we can play with the cone angle and we can get a good cone angle like so. 
but the haze don't work. So, you know, we've already talked about this one in previous videos. The haze do not really work. So you can't really get, you know, those nice looking volumetric haze. They don't work. But regardless of that, every other thing seems to be working. The shadows get to work. All that is perfectly fine. But there is no haze. So just in case you're thinking, you know, what works and what doesn't work, the haze don't work. But regardless of that, every other thing actually works perfectly fine. So strangely, something that actually works is the particles. So if you do have particles, particles work perfectly. So if I go over to where we have the object and go right here to where we have the particles, I can get a fire and smoke particle in here and, you know, we can get that. And with this in there, if we tap R on the keyboard, we do have an amazing looking stuff. All right. The rendering is just brilliant it just looks extremely nice so you can see what the rendering looks like and this is just very very beautiful the fact that these actually works makes a lot of sense so if you do have a couple of things like this you know some particles you like to import those things in yes you can you can bring those in and you can actually render them and while we speak about rendering let's talk about how you can render your shots so in some cases you might want to render by simply using the pad tracer while in some other cases you might probably you know just want to render by simply using the default twin motion rendering engine so to get this going what we have here is a simple scene so i'm just gonna go all the way back and look at this from this point so with something like this, you know, if we press R on the keyboard, we start rendering, which is good. So what we can do is we can go over to where we have our media, click on image and click on the plus sign. Now, if you click on the plus sign and you render this, it's just going to render like so. But if you would like this to render by simply using the path tracer, you need to make sure you have the path tracer turned on. And if you like to make another render by simply using the default twin motion rendering engine, you need to create a new image and turn off the path tracer render. So once you do that, and let's say we go over to a point like so, let's just travel. Actually, let's travel to the end, maybe somewhere like so. Cool. So let's say this is what we want. We would like a simple shot like this. What we can do with it is we can position our shots how we want it to be and click on this button to update it. So this gets to render with the path tracer while this other one just renders with the default stuff. If you like to make double copies of this, of course you can. You can click on this button, make a duplicate and you can set one to render with the path tracer while you allow the other one render with the default twin motion renderer. And by all means, you can always go into the more section and make changes to the lighting, the rendering, the location, the camera, and also the format. And of course, if you'd like to also take advantage of the weather, yes, you can also make changes to the weather. But one thing to keep in mind is because we're using the HDRI or the Sky Dome, we will not be getting that, you know, weather aesthetic that you get with the default one. So if I go all the way back and I go into this one and go right there, go over to the weather and, you know, start cranking this, you would notice that we're getting that, but because we're using the HDR, like I mentioned earlier, we're not getting all of that. If you would like to render with the default one, which is the default twin motion skyline, and you don't want to use the HDR, right? You can always do that. Okay. So you can always do that. You can go over to the lighting section and turn off the sky dome. Now, once you turn off the sky dome and then you go all the way back, you can now go over to the weather section and you can make all the changes to the weather that you want and what you're just essentially working with right now is with the default twin motion sky dome and this is just perfect and as well let's say you're working with something like this as well you can go all the way back and you can update it click make a duplicate and then set one of them to render by simply using the path trace so you can explore and do so many amazing things with this at this point and you can also take advantage of all of the beautiful things that Twin Motion has to offer that is currently available. One more thing before we actually go is this. You know how you get to import stuff and the pivots, for example, do not stay where you want them to be. Like in this case, we're looking at this model and you can tell that the model pivot is somewhere right here. So if I move this, that is where the pivot is. This is not good. But for sure, most times when you're working with models that you imported from different apps, you might actually get this problem. The folks at Epic Games have actually fixed this by adding a pivot shift. So with a pivot shift, you can now position the pivot where you want this to be. So with this here, I can now go ahead and click on this button one more time. And right now you'd notice that we have this going. So just in case, you know, just in case you're thinking about pivot changes and all that, 
Yep, you have this. And despite the fact that we talked about that, you can also get access to tons and tons of quick sell assets from 3D assets that deals with building, historical stuff, interior, nature, streets, props, and also food. You also have access to things like decals, 3D plants, and also surface materials. So lots of things for you guys to pick up from. And the folks at Twinmotion have also updated the object library and they're also promising that more and more object updates will be coming to Twinmotion. So for those thinking about working with this, all of this is very beautiful. We've actually talked about most of these things in their full view in the previous videos. And for those thinking about getting into working with Twinmotion, you can actually take advantage of the brand new features that is now available in Twinmotion and start creating that amazing design and renders that you have always wanted to do. So this is more like it for those who would like to read more about this or you would like to get this. You can simply take a look at the link in the description and start checking out all of the beautiful things that you can do with Twinmotion right now. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.